Akkadian Eon, the first and formative time period in Earth's long history, an eon only informally defined, might it be possible to ground the Hadean Eon in real events that occurred in the solar system and on Earth? In part one, we talked about the moon forming event, a collision between two bodies that occurred 30 to 100 million years after the formation of the solar system. And I argued that this event can be seen as the beginning of the Hadean Eon. Today, in part two, we're looking a half a billion years ahead to the end of the Hadean. It turns out that the end of the Hadean Eon and the beginning of the Archean may be more difficult to define than the beginning. The boundary between these two eons is currently undefined and arbitrarily assigned a date of four billion years ago. There have been at least two suggestions that I'm aware of for connecting this transition to real events. The first is to associate the Hadean Archean transition with the origin of life. This would at least be something to hang your hat on. And there's not much argument that the origin of life is an event of unparalleled importance. The trouble is we don't have a date for this or know exactly how or why or when this happened. The earliest undisputed evidence of life on Earth dates to 3.48 billion years ago in Western Australia. But there are unresolved arguments within the field for varying dates and sites, some of which would like to place the date for the origin of life all the way back to shortly after the collision that formed the moon and sterilized the Earth some 4.5 billion years ago. That kind of early origin, clearly in the Hadean, would be unhelpful in using the origin of life in defining the Hadean Archean boundary. The other suggestion is that the end of the late heavy bombardment might have played a role in the transition from the Hadean to the Archean Eon. The late heavy bombardment is an event hypothesized to have taken place between 3.8 and 4.1 billion years ago, in which the planets of the inner solar system were subject to increased and intensified collisions with asteroids and planetesimals. This was long after the formation of the planet 4.6 billion years ago. This bombardment could have subjected the Earth to impacts and energy that kept the planet hot, repeatedly sterilizing it of life. The late heavy bombardment derives its evidence from lunar rocks collected by astronauts during the Apollo missions. Almost all the rocks brought back from the moon dated to this period between 3.8 and 4 billion years ago and the moon retains its cratered evidence of powerful collisions. The Earth's surface has been subject to plate tectonics and erosion, and we're not able to see any retained evidence of collisions or cratering from this distant time. While correlating the events in moon history with those in Earth history would be illuminating, that has not yet been possible. The lunar rock findings and the development of the late heavy bombardment hypothesis was among the crowning achievements of the Apollo program. The proposal helped to account for something that scientists believed in the 1960s and 70s, that the Earth was molten until about 3.8 billion years ago. At the time of the Apollo missions, 3.8 billion years was about the date assigned to the earliest rocks on Earth, and the powerful collisions from the late heavy bombardment provided a potential explanation. Maybe the Earth remained hot and continents were unable to form due to the immense energy released in these collisions and was only able to cool when the late heavy bombardment ceased. One problem. Why would there be an intensification of collisions half a billion years after the formation of the planets? Wouldn't we expect more material, asteroids, planetesimals, etc., to be present in the early solar system and to decline over time as they collided with or were captured by larger bodies. An ingenious model was developed to describe the formation of the solar system and to account for the late heavy bombardment and the position and structure of the Kuiper belt. I'm only going to cover this very roughly because the topic here is defining the Hadean, not dissecting the late heavy bombardment. But around 2004, scientists developed what has been called the Nice model, named for the location in Nice, France, of the Observatoire de Côte d'Azur. 
where the model was initially developed and it has been examined and modified since. Basically, the idea is that in the early solar system, the inner terrestrial planets were in approximately their present locations, but the gas giants were much closer to the sun than where they reside now. According to the Nice model, all this changed, and the force behind the change was something called orbital resonance. This can occur when orbiting bodies influence each other in regular repeating patterns as they near each other during their orbits. Gravity often pushes orbiting objects into these resonances. The action is similar to pushing a person on a swing, where the orbit and the swing both have a frequency, and the push from one body affects the motion of the other. Many bodies in the solar system have such resonances, often in ratios of small integers. For example, Jupiter's moons, Ganymede, Europa, and Io, are in a 1 to 2 to 4 resonance and Pluto and Neptune orbit in a 2 to 3 resonance. These regularities mean that the bodies are in a stable pattern with respect to each other. It's a kind of stabilization, one result of which is that the bodies don't collide with each other. Anyway, according to the Nice model, over millions of years, gravitational influences slowly pushed Jupiter and Saturn closer to orbital resonance. Once they approached a 1 to 2 resonance, their orbits became more eccentric, disrupting the outer solar system. Jupiter began to push Saturn outward, which affected the dynamic between Neptune and Uranus. Neptune's orbit was disrupted and pushed further outward in the solar system, and Uranus was pulled with Neptune. As Neptune moved outward, it plowed into the Kuiper Belt objects, causing much of this material to be flung into the inner solar system. The asteroid belt would have been disrupted at this time as well. This orbiting material, formerly stable, but now disrupted by the gravity of large planets, rained a long storm of planetesimals into the inner solar system, including the Earth and the Moon, and the event has been called the Late Heavy Bombardment. Bringing this back to the hadean archean transition, if this model is correct, we may have our smoking gun. Maybe the end of the late heavy bombardment did allow the Earth to settle into a more stable, cooler Archean eon that made permanent continent formation possible. I find it very satisfying to think that the Hadean does make sense as a story of what was going on in the solar system, with the eon being bookended by the formation of the moon at the beginning and the end of the late heavy bombardment at the end. Very tidy and beautiful. Reality couldn't possibly be that simple, could it? There is a major problem that has developed. The late heavy bombardment, which was once widely regarded by scientists as part of the origin story of the Earth, is being rethought, and many geologists are rejecting it. More recent simulations of the early solar system suggest that the reshuffling of planets as suggested in the Nice model happened much sooner in the formation of the solar system and thus wouldn't account for a late heavy bombardment half a billion years later. In addition, evidence has accumulated that the Earth was already a cooler place by 4.1 or 4.2 billion years ago or even earlier, with liquid water on its surface. And the lunar rock data has been thrown into doubt on multiple grounds, leading many to suggest that in order to settle the issue, we're going to need to go back to the Moon and collect more samples from more locations. One result of disbelieving in the late heavy bombardment is that if the Earth was not subject to energetic, possibly sterilizing impacts as late as half a billion years or more after its formation, it would make some of the evidence for an early origin of life more plausible, but it would remove the late heavy bombardment as the later bookend on the Hadean. The alternate prediction to a late heavy bombardment style cataclysm would be a long, slow decline in collisions. Would the final end of that tale of bombardment tell us something about the end of the Hadean and the beginning of the Archean? Four billion years ago, and ironically, it's still too soon to tell. Be sure to subscribe, hit the notification button, and thanks a lot for watching.